It's one of our favorite locations on the IndyCar and Indy Next calendar. It's beautiful Birmingham, Alabama, and Barber Motorsports Park. And it's Indy Next by Firestone in the Grand Prix of Alabama on a picture-perfect day. Low 70s on a Sunday morning, up to the high 80s by the time we are done this afternoon. A little bit of cloud cover might make things more comfortable. Nice breeze at times, too. And this is simply an awesome weekend and one we look forward to visiting each year. I'm Kevin Lee along with Charlie Kimball and ready to go. And it feels like it's another start to the season. It's been a little bit, Charlie, about six weeks since St. Petersburg. Yeah, the challenge for these drivers is they've had six weeks off. Some of them have been just thinking about Barber since the checkered flag in St. Pete. Others have been out racing other things, even racing an IndyCar. So for a driver coming in, refocusing, knowing there's been a race six weeks ago, but it does feel like the first day of school all over again. Let's remind everybody where we sit in the standings, and this essentially is the finishing order from the opener on the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. Nolan Siegel is expected to be a championship contender. He backed it up. Absolutely. Coming out with that strong start for Nolan Siegel, really the way he wanted to start the season. He's the one who's been doing some racing in IndyCar. It hasn't deterred his focus at all on chasing down that Indy Next championship this season. All right, let's start to look ahead and what we can expect to see today. And we welcome into the third member of our team to Pit Lane and DJ Clark. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Charlie. I am down on the grid with your pole sitter, Jacob Abel. And Jacob, fast in practice, fast in qualifying. Do you have the car to go fast here today in the race? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think yesterday our new tire pace was honestly not even as good as our old tire pace. So, um, yeah, you know, really looking forward to it out there. Just got to kind of keep my head down and move forward. You know, this is one of the best places to be on pole because it's really, really hard to pass here. So, yeah, just got to kind of eyes forward and make no mistakes and should be good. Well, we've heard a lot of talk about the tires this weekend. In terms of degradation, are you expecting much? Are you going to have to watch out for them? Yeah, it'll be interesting because we never really get to do a true long run until the race. Um, but, yeah, I think you'll definitely have to look after them a little bit. Luckily, I'm in the best spot to, to do that, you know, from where I am on the grid. But, uh, yeah, you know, should be good. All right. That's your pole sitter, Jacob Abel. Thank you. Thank you. So Abel gets the jump on the field today looking for win number one. But when we think about Barber Motorsports Park and Indy Next, we think about HMD because they certainly have been dominant here in recent years. You look at what they were able to do last year. They had a chance at one point late in the race to finish one, two, three, four, five. Four and five actually came together, but still swept the podium. Linus Lundquist, Christian Rasmussen got their championship run started with wins at Barber Motorsports Park. And Nolan Siegel looks to continue that trend of back-to-back -back winners and back-to-back-to-back -back -back winners for HMD here. And I think Jacob Abel's definitely uh, trying to spoil that HMD party. He knows that if he can go out, this is his first pole on a road or street circuit. He's had a pole at Iowa on that short oval before but he knows that he can go out, get the job done today. It will leapfrog him into the championship conversation. Let's talk about what the drivers are going to be facing today. Nobody better than Charlie Kimball. Uh, six IndyCar podiums and a fourth place finish in IndyCar back here in 2013. Tell me about the Alabama roller coaster. It is a lot of a racetrack. There's a lot of elevation changes, long flowing corners, connections from lefts to rights to lefts to rights. Big downhill here, this compression and up over the crest can catch the cars out. Turn five, it's a hot spot. Big brake zone, great passing opportunity. Opportunity there for uh, some cars to come together and end in tears. The run down to the museum section, this turn eight, nine complex, just in front of our commentating booth. Lots of downhill, lots of curb crashing, but it sets up a long run down to my favorite corners in IndyCar. This turn 12 left, turn 13 right, up the hill through turns 14, 15, 16, 17, down the hill, back onto the front straight. That last section, turn 12 to 17, I think is the best rhythm complex of corners in, in IndyCar, in Indy Next. And 21 cars, so you've got to navigate traffic, and if you had any kind of an issue in qualifying, you might have a quick car, and there are some circumstances of that coming through the back is going to be really challenging. All right, everybody is strapped in and ready to go for this one today as we get set for IndyCar and NBC coming up at 1 o'clock Eastern 
today. 140 is the green flag for the IndyCar event. But first, it's the future stars of IndyCar. Let's go downstairs. In the Indy Next by Firestone, Grand Prix of Alabama. Here to give the command to start the engines, your Grand Marshals for the Indy Next by Firestone Grand Prix of Alabama. IndyCar Nation rookie members, Dillon and Jackson. Drivers, start your engines! <laughs> Two pace laps are coming up before we get set to go for this one. 35 laps or 55 minutes, and this is how they will line up. Second career pole in the Abel construction car for Jacob Abel, and that was with a new track record. And Nolan Siegel, championship leader, has won the only race of the season, and the Menlo Ventures car starts on the outside of row one. Andretti Gro Global with their fastest qualifier, and James Rowe starting inside of row two. Kyle Collette, the first rookie on the grid, outside of row two for HMD Motorsports. Jamie Chadwick was quick at St. Pete, uh, took some contact and did not have a good result. This is her best qualifying performance, starting on the inside of row five, and it's another see what you can do weekend. Michael D. Orlando going race by race in the priority RSR car for Cape Andretti. He starts sixth. Bryce Aaron, another rookie inside of row four here. That 27 car for Andretti Global. Andretti, three cars inside the top eight. Reese Gold for HMD, second year competitor in Indy next by Firestone outside of row four. Miles Rowe is in the force Indy program with HMD. He started third and finished eighth in the opener. Starts just a little bit further back in this one. And then Callum Hedge in just his second Indy Next event, second race in America, will start next to him. Josh Pearson, we're talking just this morning about him overcoming the mental block of carrying a lot of speed through these high speed, high commitment corners here at Barber Motorsports Park. Feels like he's overcome that. A little more confidence starting 11. Salvador Dialba on the junior on the outside of row six as another rookie in the field. Josh Mason is making good progress in just his second weekend in an Indy Next machine. The F2 veteran starts 13th for Abel Motorsports. And Jonathan Brown coming off a great debut at St. Pete. He finished sixth. He will start 14th. And uh, Jack William Miller inside a row eight in that family run Miller Vinatieri Motorsports car. And you've been Sundermore, the, the third Able Motorsports car this weekend, that number 22 car on the outside of row eight, starting 16. Christian Bogle is in the Pelican Energy car for HMD, starts in 17th. And another one of the rookies, Nolan Aller from Gross Point Woods, Michigan, 22-year-old in his second next race next to him. Lindsey Burr inside of row 10 in the Seoul Yunkos Hollinger entry, the second female driver in our field, starting in that 19th spot. Spot at Niels Colon outside of row 10 and 20th. Louis Foster was quick really here last year, had a mechanical issue that put him out of the race, and has fought electrical and mechanical gremlins all weekend long, starting in 21st shotgun on the field. We will keep an eye on him. All right, keys to this one, Kimball's keys. So it's all about rebuilding rhythm. Barber Motorsports Park is obviously a rhythm racetrack. There's a lot of connected corners, lefts, rights, elevation. But it's also about rebuilding the rhythm of the season. Six weeks in St. Pete, building to a championship. You've got to get in that rhythm. That momentum can start now. We've talked about turn five being the best overtaking spot. It's also the heaviest brake point. So you have to manage it so you don't flat spot a tire and hurt your ability to break everywhere, but also you can't break early because someone will steam down the inside and take the position from you. We will go green this time by. It's been almost a couple of months. How much anxiety, how much aggression is there going to be to get this one started? There's the alternate start finish line. That means we are just about ready. They still need to get lined up. This is one of the more challenging courses to get lined up here as they come through the final couple of corners. Right there to the left is pit in. Round two, Indy Nets by Firestone. Will we see the green? No, not this time. Way too much of a gap in the middle of the field. 
Looked like uh, fourth place car of Kyle Collette not able to get up alongside James Rowe in that row two, and it just created a big stagger effect all the way back through the field. Race control, race director Kyle Novak opting to wave off the start. This counts as the start technically of the race. It's a lap number one for these drivers, but they'll cycle back around, re-rack, and try and get a green on restart on start number two. Any advantage there that maybe you started, especially for those up front, did they get on the gas a little bit, get a little more heat in their tires? With two laps, two pace laps, there's definitely the opportunity to get everything hot. You got tires and brakes hot. I think it's, everyone's ready to go, right? They're amped up, especially after such a long break since the first race. They want to get that green flag out. You know, Jacob Abel up front, he just wants a clean start. He wants to disappear up the road and not have to think about Nolan Siegel, James Rowe behind him. I want to keep an eye in the back of that Copart Novera Technologies car, the Andretti Global of Louis Foster. Uh, what kind of a jump he gets. We know he's way quicker than everybody else back there. He's back there simply because they had mechanical issues, not just qualifying. They've had him throughout the weekend. So he doesn't have a great feel on the car, but we know he can be quick. Let's try again. That first lap counted, so this will be lap two. We will go. Jacob Abel looking for that first win in the black and red car on the inside. Nolan Siegel, who won at St. Pete, starting on the outside, looking for the green. Let's go from Alabama. They jump out of line in the back to try to avoid a stack up. Three, three, three. Abel gets the jump into turn one. Siegel will get through in second. Pretty clean so far. Good jump for Jacob Abel. Nolan Siegel tucking in. James Rowe following in third. Kyle Collette with a good run. We got one car in the gravel. Is that Josh Pearson? And he might have been one of those that jumped out of line a little bit. That is the number 14 car of Josh Pearson with HMD. Side by side into this hot spot, turn five. Everybody looking for a way past the car in front. The start is under review. We noticed a couple of people mid pack jump out of line. You need to stay in your column before the start of the race. So that is one thing they could be looking at. Looks like Foster's got about five at the start. Up front. Abel and Siegel. I expect they will go to battle for the next 33 laps or so. They are definitely starting to separate themselves from the rest of the pack. A lot of curb usage there in turn 12 for Nolan Siegel. Maybe dropped him back a little bit. The 28 car here at Jamie All Chapman. You're better than he is. Getting some radio communication, encouraging their drivers. They're talking about on the button for Nolan Siegel. Encouraging him, saying, you're better than Jacob Abel up front. Go get him early on while the tires are fresh. You have a little more grip to try and make a pass. Jacob Abel has been better than everyone all weekend. Half a second faster in practice one, three-tenths faster in practice two, about three-tenths faster in qualifying as well. Let's go back to the start again. Miles Rowe getting real sideways, and as he gathers it up, it definitely looks like Josh Pearson jumps out of line. Yuvin Sundermoorthy, or Josh, excuse me, Josh Mason, a little further back, jumping out of line. I'm sure that's what race control will look at. Obviously, they were avoiding contact. If they pull back in line, I would expect race control to not penalize those cars. He did get back in line. And then what else happened to Josh Pearson as they went through one, that green and white car, if it goes far enough to see... Did he go off and something happen? Oh, he tries to go around the outside three wide into turn two, gets in that okay. uh, out of the groove in that dirty part of the racetrack and just slides off. Once you get in the grass, you almost accelerate out to that gravel trap. And Josh Pearson is still on track. He's about a half a straightaway behind. So he is still on the lead lap. Yes, he is on the lead lap. All right, back live now. Same as we left them. Jacob Abel and Nolan Siegel, and Siegel's got a little bit of a run there. Louis Foster, by the way, has already picked up eight spots. He's running in 13th. James Rowe is doing a nice job. He's still in the mix back there in third. Kyle Collette uh, separated a little bit as well from Bryce Aaron running in fifth.
And then Louis Foster has picked up another spot. He's up to 12th. This might be the show today. Just got by Josh Mason in that red and white car a moment ago. There's the 26 for Andretti Global. The orange and black car has gone from the back to just about mid-pack now. He had a great race going here last year as a rookie, had a stuck throttle and slid through the gravel, ended up in the wall, ruined his day. I don't know what he has done to offend the racing gods here at Barber Motorsports Park, but he is making up for it now. An incredible run from Louis Foster, starting all the way back in 21st, up to 12th so far at the moment with more to come for him. And there is a car stalled, and it's Juven Sundermorthy. A 21-year-old from Wisconsin with Able Motorsports has come to a stop on the track. That feels like a mechanical failure to me. The way where he has stopped on the racetrack, that run up to turn 16, I would expect a full course yellow to come out here momentarily because that car, oh, and he just got it moving. And they just threw the yellow. Oh, they missed it by about two seconds, and he's right near the pit in. Did he get to pit in? No, he stopped. So now you have to throw it, and they did not throw it in vain. For a moment, he was rolling. And he's trying again. The field is right behind him now. And now this yellow saves Juven Sundermore these race because he could pull back to the tail end of the lead lap. He did not roll in pit lane, so they will see if it fixed itself. Control-Alt-Delete is usually essentially what you're doing. Turn it off, turn it back on. And I'm hearing that it's a shifting issue with the 22 car for you and Sundermore. The, so it is a gearbox problem. He was able to get it back to neutral, fired up, and in gear. So we'll see if that problem manages to resolve itself. Maybe he was able to reset the system and clear that issue he's got. So this is right before this. That's Lindsey Brewer taking a little bit of ride through turn one. It is a hard corner. It's fast, big commitment. And as you get to the apex, the road falls away from you. They are going to go green this time. It'll be a very short yellow because that 22 car was able to clear itself, essentially. And Sundermorthy will not get the chance to pack back up. He is still more than a half a lap behind. He is on the lead lap, though, so he's going to need another caution to be able to make up some spots. So let's reset now. Let's see who's moved. Uh, Louis Foster, plus eight. Bryce Aaron, plus two. Miles Rowe, Salvador de Alba have all gained a spot. Jack William Miller has also gained a spot. Pearson has lost eight. We saw that off at the start. And then obviously Sundermorthy as well. This restart, this pack up full course yellow definitely helps Louis Foster. It brings everyone back together. It's a great opportunity for him to take advantage of the grip of those Firestone tires. They're still pretty fresh. We're five laps into this race, six laps in. He'll be able to try and get up and get past Salvador D'Alba Jr. And then Josh Pearson, or excuse me, just uh, Callum Hedge up the road from him. It's the next cars in his sights to try and get inside the top 10, inside the top five for a good result. So how aggressive will Nolan Siegel get here at the start? He's already got the championship advantage right now, but Jacob Abel finished second in that race. So these are two of the main combatants. I would say Louis Foster is probably the other one everyone picked this year to win the championship, and he's running mid-pack. Just about set to go again from Barber Motorsports Park. Round two of 2024, Indy next. Jacob Abel has finished second three times. Is today gonna be the day? Nolan Siegel right behind him. James Rowe with a good run so far this weekend again. He's in the blue and white car in third. Back to green, Abel maintains the spot through turn one. A little further back, mostly single file. Louis Foster, Foster. going around the outside, Salvador. Alba Jr. and Callum Hedge. That is a scary spot if you go off. We've seen big accidents there already this weekend in USF Juniors. Two wide down in turn five. Louis Foster on the inside getting the job done. That is the right way to get the pass. Going the long way on the outside is very high risk, low reward. I think Jack William Miller in that blue number 40 car, Patterson Dental car, also got a spot there in turn five. No action on the original start. So we can 
focus on racing now. And again, the top two have separated just a little bit. James Rowe still holding off Kyle Collette in that brightly colored uh, green and yellow and black car. Collette's got a little bit of a run on Rowe right now, trying to track him down for third. Jacob Abel did everything he needed on that restart. Maybe not quite as good a jump as the initial start. Nolan Siegel still right there. Louis Foster gets on the curb, car bottoms, puts him in the grass. He's still able to hold the position over Salvador Diablo Jr., but not able to get the spot on Callum Hedge. He did get one more, so running 11th right now. Abel and Siegel are running pretty identical lap times, but now Siegel got a nice exit here. Let's see if he can set himself up with a little bit of run now, heading towards the museum corner. And what he does there, he's got that really bright green front wing on that car. And as he pops that nose out, he's not thinking about a pass, but he's just reminding Jacob Abel, Hey, I'm back here. Don't forget about me. Don't forget that there's a car right there behind you. You make a mistake, I'm gonna take advantage. Where can you pass here? Where are the best opportunities? So the best spot is definitely into the hairpin of turn five, but you can see some sneaky passes here into 16. Joseph Newgarden, historically, he did it on me. First time surprised me years ago. But that last complex of corners, you can sneak in there. But keep the pressure on him. Whatever you gotta do, keep the pressure on him. He's making mistakes. You got this, bud. That's exactly what Nolan Siegel's team is telling him on the radio. Keep pressuring him. Remind him you're there. Force him into a mistake. Where did you get Will? Did you pass Will Power here that was pretty bold? Uh, it was at the end of the back straight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He was saving a lot of fuel. Okay. And it was a big commitment. And Will gave me plenty of room. It was a good racing move. But yeah, I definitely got out of the car feeling taller after that. <laughs> All right. Louis Foster check in. Up to ninth. Some radio from about a minute or two ago. So that's all back to that restart where Callum Hedge, they were wheel to wheel, that compression. Louis got out on the curb. He says he ran me off the road. It wasn't as aggressive, I think, to a point of a penalty, but now he's got Miles Rowe in his sights here trying to move up to seven. What an impressive charge so far for Louis Foster. And as disappointed as he is to not have the chance to run up front and control the race, uh, certainly he's thinking scholarship and needs the points. What does this do for a young driver? Kyle Kirkwood is an example. He told me when he got to IndyCar, I was not used to running in the middle of the pack. I always led in controlled races. I think it's a really good experience for Louis Foster. Yes, it's not what you want when you're thinking about championship and running up front, but it teaches you how to deal with dirty air, how to set up, because even if you are Jacob Abel, Nolan Siegel, Nolan Siegel, the over-under on the exit of turn five. Oh, That's your corner. So Abel is going to have the inside spot here. How bold is Siegel going to be? He'll back out for now. Abel maintains the position. It is a single line there through turn eight and nine, right in front of this beautiful museum, down through 11 and through this chicane, this fast corner at the end of the straight. You really shouldn't be able to pass there. It's happened once, but Nolan Siegel, he's got to be thinking, I've got 25 laps, I've got to keep the pressure on, and when it's there, I've got to take it. While we watch this battle, DJ, tell us uh, what you know about Juven Sunderborn. Well, Kevin, I'm told it was a compressor issue for the Able Motorsports driver. They think it's resolved itself, but they're keeping a close eye as this race goes along. So he has been able to get one more spot back. He has passed Lindsey Brewer, runs 20th, uh, and he has caught up to the tail end of the field. So that's good news for Sunderworthy. Nothing happening in turn five this lap for Nolan Siegel. Jacob Abel, maybe Jacob's car works a little We're better. We're not gonna close up on him, let's just settle in. Try to go after him, but if he can't get there, we'll just settle in, bud. And that's good advice for Nolan Siegel's team. If you can't make a pass, settle in, save your tires, save your overtake, and just be ready to take advantage later in the race. 
Foster up to seventh. We saw him scream by. They're all about equal distance. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And a little bit of a gap back to Foster, who just got by Miles Rowe. There's Nolan Siegel running in second, chasing down Jacob Abel. We watch this battle. Well, let's hear from the namesake of that team and dad, who is the team owner with DJ. Down here on pit lane with Bill Abel. Bill, a little bit of a hairy run there with Nolan Siegel on that last lap, but what's the team telling Jacob? Just do, do what you know how to do. Jacob's got this. He's been super fast all week. He's got such a great race car. All week long, he's been talking about how easy it's been for him. So, you know, Nolan and the rest of the field are going to push him and make him earn it today, which is how he wants it. That's how we want it. Well, how hard is this as a team owner and a dad? I mean, do you have to kind of wear different hats when you're uh, watching a race like this? Yeah, of course. You know, when uh, Yuvin just had a problem a minute ago and sort of pulled me over to, to look at what's going on with him, and then I kind of check back on Jacob to see how he's doing. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's exactly what I signed on for. <laughs> exactly what he signed on for and hoping for a good result today. Thank you. Thanks, DJ. He's finished second three different times, has been knocking on the door. Might this be the day? And if you get it done and you beat Nolan Siegel, you're going to feel like you definitely earned it. There's still others that still could be a factor. James Rowe and Kyle Collette have not let them get away. A little further back, Jamie Chadwick. We mentioned her best start of her young career in season number two. And she is still pretty much where she started. She dropped one spot at the beginning, running in sixth. That would equal her best career finish. Jamie Chatterton is starting to figure things out year two knowing these tracks. I've been really impressed with her progress. Coming back in year two, she didn't know any of the tracks. She didn't know any of the racing last year. She came in, she learned. Everyone, I think people might have been disappointed with her results last year, but she was building towards this year. It was a much more physical car that she was used to. She put a lot of time in the gym over the winter. She reviewed everything from last season, and she's come out, and at St. Pete, I think she was disappointed qualifying a little further back. She'd been around the top five in every practice session. Same thing here at Barber Motorsports Park. She was around the top five, qualified fifth, running sixth. It shows real definitive progress from Jamie Chadwick in that 28 car. It was a big step for her last year. The W Series uh, car, is that more like a USF 2000 type of level car? It's an F3 car from the regional in the American Series. And that is certainly not as powerful, not as physical as these Indy Next machines. And it's not as much power, not as much weight and size. And that physicality is just tough to build. It takes time and it takes a lot of effort. And she put that effort in over the winter and it's it's proving itself so far this season. Town is there, just needs the experience and the opportunity like so many. Here is Sundermore, the rolling down the pit lane. So issues still, unfortunately, for the recent Wisconsin grad. So let's check in on the leaders again as we look at one and two, keeping it within a second. DJ, what are they thinking about in the HMD camp for Nolan Siegel? Well, Kevin, I just had a chance to talk to him. At the beginning of the race, it was all push all the time. They wanted to attack Jacob Abel. Now, they've switched gears a little bit. They're in a more of a wait and see opportunity and let the opportunities come to them while also preserving those Firestone tires. Top two have gaps. James Rowe a bit, who is also gaps. Kyle Collette. There's Rowe back there in the blue and white Topcon car and a little further back to Colette, 21 year old from Sao Paulo, who had uh, an impressive start to his season at St. Pete and he finished seventh and that was after a spin and dropping back to 11th. And this group of cars, that third all the way back to Louis Foster, there's about a second between them. And that's the point, just like we see here up front with Jacob Babel, and Nolan Siegel that you start to get into that dirty air. And when you're back there, that dirty air, you get that aerodynamic weight coming off the car in front of you, car slides around a little more. Now the one thing that can make up for that is the push to pass system. It is a button on the wheel. It's been a hot topic of conversation within the IndyCar paddock this week, but here in the Indy Next Championship, it's about a 50 horsepower boost. 
get 150 seconds total over the course of the race, up to 15 seconds of push. The straights aren't quite that long here. And it is available once the driver reaches the alternate start finish on starts and restarts. So it's not available from the drop of the green flag. And that's what's driven the conversation within the IndyCar paddock and some penalties coming out of the St. Pete race. Here in Indy next, everything's been working like it's supposed to, everyone being legal, but that push to pass can help you drive through that dirty air, get to the back of the car in front of you, and then help you complete that pass. Now the other side of that coin is the leading car can use it as a push to defend system as well. Keeping an eye on Louis Foster from last up to seventh, and let's hear his radio. There's some attempts quicker than Jamie, uh, but everybody has 130 seconds to push the pass. You're at 80. So he used up quite a bit to make his way through the field, and it's one thing to get through the track traffic of cars that you're clearly faster than. Now he's with other quick cars. That's right, and, and being a teammate car with Jamie Chadwick, rule number one is don't crash your teammate. Rule number two is don't crash your teammate. So <laughs> he's got to make sure that when he sets up a pass, it's going to be clean and going to be smart. He probably has a little bit of pace over Jamie Chadwick at the moment. He's running really quick laps, really impressive driving from the back of the field. He can't get stuck and lose his momentum here. He's got to keep driving forward. He is lighter on, pushed a pass than Jamie in front of him, but this could be a good run down to turn five. That thing snapped and he saved it. He I would expect he had to lift because of that slide right at the exit of turn two. We'll keep an eye on this. Not close enough this time by through turn five. DJ, uh, Yuvin Sundermorthy was sat in the pits for a bit, but he's back out now. Do they know what the issue is, and is it fixed? Uh, they think they have it fixed here at this point, Kevin. It looks like it was something electrical. I saw them take the steering wheel off the car. The car was plugged into a computer. Looks like they did a Control-Alt-Delete, got everything refigured, and sent it back out. Hopefully, that'll be the last time we see Yuvin down in pit lane. But three laps down, and so far, all running. So he's going to need some attrition to score any points, but still a young driver. Something can be gained from this. And next up is a road course as well, Indianapolis Motor Speedway in a couple of weeks. And that is a double header weekend too. So it becomes a test day for you and Sutton Worthy. There's she, Louis Foster still working on Jamie Chadwick. And she's still within a second of Bryce Aaron just up the road from her. Louis Foster, this last time through this turn one, two, three complex, had a really good run, but when he got really close to the back of that 28 car, the car snapped on him, had a big slide, he would have had to lift, it killed all his momentum to try and make the pass down in turn five. So he's still gathering up a little bit from that movement from the car, trying to set up. Picking up a bit, leaders are 12-7 now. So that's getting a lap time updates from the cars. Further up the road, Louis Foster stuck in traffic. You can see that 13-1 on lap 15 was when he was catching Jamie Chadwick. Now that he's in traffic, his pace has slowed down just a little. Bit. Yeah, and what they were saying is that the leaders are picking up the pace. The fastest laps of the race have just been turned. Nolan Siegel is 1 100th one of a second faster than Jacob Abel, so they are pretty much identical. Those are the top two. And then running third in the race, James Rowe is less than a tenth behind them for the third fastest lap. He also just did that a couple of laps ago. And Kyle Collette uh, on lap 16, three laps ago, turned his quickest at 1.12.9. And then it's Louis Foster. Just over 113, his fastest, but that was a little while ago, and possibly when he still was using the overtake button. So we are past the midway point of this one. We had a caution, it was very, very brief. Jacob Abel starting on pole has led throughout, but Nolan Siegel has been right in his mirrors the entire way. They have separated a bit from the rest of the field. James Rowe, Kyle Collette, and Bryce Aaron still in play in the top five. Thanks for joining us today from Barber Motorsports Park. On Peacock, Kevin Lee, Charlie Kimball, DJ Clark. This is round two.
of the 14 race 2024 Indy Next Championship. The opener at St. Pete won by Nolan Siegel. A little gap for some, but not all. Nolan Siegel is one of those that has been quite busy. Uh, not only did he run the Rolex 24 in IMSA, but then he's tested an IndyCar. He got his first chance in an IndyCar at the exhibition weekend. Showed good pace. He was faster than several. Uh, he missed by one advancing into the feature race, so that was impressive. Got a chance at the famous Long Beach Grand Prix last week. Finished 20th for Dale Coyne Racing. He will attempt to qualify for the Indianapolis 500 and have another event in Toronto coming up. And those are the only weekends available. I'm sure Dale Coyne asked him this weekend, hey, uh, any chance you can do both? Because he just solidified the driver of that car on Monday because Nolan has shown that he can be competitive in IndyCar already. And he seems to take care of the equipment as well. The most important thing for Nolan Siegel in those races in an IndyCar is to complete laps, gain experience, build his knowledge base, and get ready for what could be a full-time IndyCar program next year. Yeah, I think Nolan's probably going to have some options uh, after this season. He and Jacob Abel are likely going to be in a fight throughout the season for the championship. Louis Foster and others are going to have something to say with that. Do we have debris? We do. Is it in the racing line? So my gut feeling is that's outside the racing line at the moment, although it's race control sounds like we're hearing they're going to leave that there. That's offline, that turn 12, 13 complex. They usually put it there because when you sit in these race cars, your eye line is so low with the elevation, you can't see the curb. So they put that there to let you know where the curbs are. Someone obviously took too much curb and knocked that out of its mountain there. So we've got three teams in the top three right now. Running third is an Andretti Global car. DJ, tell us more. Well, I had a chance to talk to them a little bit about uh, Row up in that third place position. I asked him if they were in full attack mode. They said, no, we've got plenty of time left in this race. We're going to let it come to us. I also wanted to know about Jamie Chadwick and Louis Foster, if there were any team orders involved in that and letting Foster through. They laughed at me, Kevin. They said, uh, we don't do that. They're free to race. Well, and it is a little different, Kevin, if I may jump in here in the Indy Next Series because these drivers are most all customers of the teams, right? They are bringing the partners, they are bringing a program to build their experience and prove themselves to Michael Andretti, other IndyCar team owners towards a future in the IndyCar Series. Also, it's race number two. Maybe there's a little more conversation about taking care of your teammates if your teammate is in the championship hunt, especially if their com competitor for that championship title is with another team. If you're talking about Louis Foster racing Jacob Abel for the championship, maybe Jamie Chadwick's gonna make it just that little bit easier if she's not in the championship hunt at that point to let him pass. Maybe. Maybe. I'm, I'm still, if I'm the driver, I'm going to be asking, uh, what's in it for me? Because, again, I brought the budget. I secured this deal. Yes, we're going to race each other fairly. And we want everyone to do well. But if you're faster than me, pass me. If you're not, then good luck to you. And and that's what I, partly what I'm saying is if he makes a pass, that maybe you could push that little bit harder Agreed. in the last race. Agree. You know, maybe if you're talking the last event of the year. But nobody's pulling over. No. Well, not at all. They have. They did once. I, I, can, I can recall once where they did uh, that led to a championship. That might go back to one of our storylines. So I, I was uh, wondering, as Nolan Siegel is in play, when's the last time somebody won the first two races of the season? Any idea? you got to go back. Ed Jones in 2015, not his championship season, his first season, he won the first three, did not win the championship. And then came back the next year and won the championship. And then won the championship, and there, um, some people flew there were a little shenanigans with somebody pulling over and helping him late in the race in that one with the teammates. So Louis absolutely running 
fast laps to catch up to Jamie Chadwick, but has not been able to find a way past. He has moved up 14 spots, a very impressive day from that 21st, but now these cars in front of him are all on much similar pace to what he's able to run. The leaders are running 12 sixes, 12 sevens. He's running 13 threes, 13 ones with Jamie right in front of him. So he's got to find a way past, take advantage of some clean air. Here's Michael D. Orlando with Cape Andretti in another really critical weekend for him. The budget has been secured uh, here in, I think, just really the last few days from Rising Star Racing and also from another one of his primary partners, Priority Technology Holdings. And then, you know, Miles Rowe right behind him, this or right in front of him, this is not new. They spent a lot of time the last few years at USF Pro 2000, where Miles won the championship last year, and two years ago at USF 2000, when Michael D. Orlando was able to get past in the last weekend and passed Miles Rowe for the championship. So they have spent a lot of time together, and they know each other's tendencies. They've had a few coming togethers as well in the lower levels, but a lot of respect for each other, and good to see them in rookie seasons showing well at the top step to get to IndyCar. And they're both finding their feet. These are brand new race cars for them. So for them, they're really building that rhythm, building that knowledge base as rookies racing together. And Miles Rowe has a lot of data to look at with the HMD cars and Michael D. Orlando has a lot of data with the Andretti Global information to look at, that Cape Motorsports team partnering with Andretti. So they have the information, and the fact that they're both running inside the top 10 shows they know what to do with it. Back up front, Jacob Abel. The gap is still the same as it has been almost the entire race, just under a second. Three cars for Abel Motorsports this weekend, but DJ, soon we are going to see a fourth. Yes, we are, and I am down here with the newly minted Able Motorsports driver, Taylor Ferns. Absolutely incredible. How much are you looking forward to being able to run ovals with this team this year? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Just really grateful for the opportunity, you know, to kind of expand my horizons, you know, coming from sprint car racing and silver crown racing, you know, still open wheel, but in a different form. Um, and so, you know, I really can't thank my sponsor, Bradford Allen, enough. You know, it's been a lot of hard work getting to this point, and I'm excited to represent the sprint car community and show what I can do. Well, I was going to say, I mean, you're kind of following in some pretty historic footsteps. This is how AJ came up. This is how a lot of the uncers came up and that kind of thing. So what kind of advice have you been getting on how to make that transition from USAC short track racing over to these Indy Next cars? Yeah, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people and grateful, you know, to network and have a lot of connections for people to influence me and offer me a lot of helpful advice and guidance. You know, Lynn St. James has been instrumental um, throughout a large portion of my career, but obviously this transition. Uh, Sarah Fisher, you know, I've been um, in contact with her a lot, and, you know, she wants to help me out as much as she can. Obviously, she comes from a sprint car background as well. Um, so, you know, I'm really going to lean on her a lot for that transition. And then, you know, a handful of other uh, sprint car guys, you know, I think that they're going to help us out a little bit. So, you know, it's obviously been a while since we've had um, somebody from my form of racing come and do this. And so, you know, I think it'd be kind of cool to kind of get the community involved, if you will, and, you know, kind of help me lead the way. Well, we're looking forward to it. One last question for you. I know you've got a little bit until you're going to appear here in Indy Next. So where can folks see you the next time you're going to be on the track? Yeah, so I'm racing my Silver Crown car next weekend at Winchester Speedway in Winchester, Indiana. Um, after that, we go to the Belleville High Banks and the Dirt Silver Crown car out in Kansas. Um, and then we race Carp Night um, in the USAC Silver Crown Division. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. You know, I've run really well. Um, podium there once and so you know hopefully going two spots better this year hopefully you can be able to do that somebody to watch out for kevin and charlie thank you so much cool story i had been told she is very talented and it's, it's a tough transition but nobody is counting out taylor ferns to be able to make an impact on the ovals in the next this season it's gotten a little bit tighter up front it's been about eight tenths most of the time now it's a car length measurement a couple of car lengths and less than four tenths nolan siegel working on Jacob Abel as we get inside 10 laps as Abel looks to win his first race in Indy Next and Siegel looks to go two for two and take a little bit of early control in the championship. And then back there, great runs for James Rowe and Kyle Collette in third and fourth. 
James Rowe is another one of those that has been close to winning before. He's finished second. He's finished in the top five several times. Really strong this weekend for him in the Andretti Global Car. But Colette has started to make a little bit of move on him. Let's keep an eye on Siegel here as they start to head towards turn number five. This is the best passing zone. He's not close enough this time, but can he use the draft to get a little bit closer? Well, on that 10 laps to go, Mark, is a great mental opportunity to win. 40 seconds remaining. He has 16. 40 seconds to 60 with eight laps to go. And that's an update on the push to pass amount of times. That's no, Nolan Siegel's team telling him he's got 40 seconds. Jacob Abel with 60. They use that as a way to launch the car out of the corners for lap time. Eventually, no one's going to have to use a full shot of it down into turn five. Jacob will likely have to defend on that. We'll see with eight laps to go at the moment, seven when they get to the line, if no one's able to do anything with it. This one is still tight. No matter how this finishes up, I think this has been impressive. Foster is one of the championship favorites this year, and, and many may have said he is the favorite. Uh, maybe Nolan Siegel's camp and Jacob Abels might say differently, but she has been able in the same car to keep him behind for quite a few laps. Not done yet, and Foster may eventually get her, but if he does, he is going to have earned it. He is right on her tail as they head into turn two. He's looking for the exit here. Great job positioning from Jamie Chadwick. They're moving to the inside, take away some of his momentum out of turn two, down to turn five, the best passing opportunity. Really subtle what she did there as far as a little wider at apex, a little tighter on exit. Take away the, the downforce off his car and just slow his momentum. Really, really nice, subtle job of racecraft from J.B. Chadwick there. And she's added a car leg to that advantage now. So maintaining that spot in six, back up front. Abel back up by eight tenths. Listen, listen to radio from Nolan Siegel. Full attack, but full attack. We have way more push to pass, make it count. Let's take advantage. Just looking at fastest laps. Now it's Kyle Collette running in fourth with a 112.58, then Siegel 112.64, uh, four hundreds faster than Jacob Abel, Rowe, Foster also right there. So it's all really tight. And remember the prior track record was in that 112.5 time frame. So these drivers doing a great job today. Ultimate pace. Jacob Abel's able to hold on for these last six laps it would mean a tie up front. Point for pole, point for the points for winning a race and finishing second. They've essentially reversed the positions from St. Pete. A tie going into the doubleheader at the Indianapolis Grand Prix. For Jacob Abel and Abel Motorsports, this was one of their weak tracks. I talked with Bill Abel yesterday about this. and He only qualified 15th last year. They had issues in the race. He had a coming together. Uh, last year in the race and finished 16th, but he said that was a priority. They were good in the test. They've been working on road courses, and obviously it clicked because Abel has led every session this weekend. Well, I talked to Jacob about it yesterday. I said, you know, two good practices, and, and after last year, he goes, oh, we were terrible. He goes, this was a priority for us. We had a really good test, and I've had a lot of confidence coming in. It's been five months since we tested here, but we rolled off and the car was good. I've had confidence. I've been able to push and go get the lap time when I needed it. I also talked yesterday with Bill about his Indy 500 plans. They ran the Indy 500 with R.C. Ederson last year. Were very impressive. They stayed out of the last row shootout. They had plenty of pace as a brand new team. That was a very, very impressive accomplishment, and they have been planning on adding an entry this year and working with R.C. Ederson to make that happen. But they did not make the test. They have still hope to do it, but it's not done at this point, and it's it's getting a little more questionable. They're still optimistic. Uh, the Anderson camp is still trying to put together the partnerships to make it happen, and they have some time to do that. But it looks like, because there was some speculation that they have another chassis, they could entertain some other drivers to run in another chassis. 
uh, for that 35th entry, but Bill said it's it's almost certainly going to be either R.C. Enerson or we don't run. Use it all you want here, bud. Push, push. And there was some conversation by, well, people like me. Would they put Jacob in the car? And Bill said we did think about that strongly. I think Jacob would like to do it, but we have all decided it would be best for him to focus on this championship and do it in 2025. There are going to be further opportunities. So Jacob, as of now, is not going to run the Indy 500 and still hoping that we see R.C. Ederson in that car and we get some positive news soon on that front. Let's check back in on Miles Rowe in that Force Indy car. He has now caught up to Louis Foster. Louis He's Foster. the back of yeah. Jamie Chadwick a little bit. We know Foster has been a little bit short on push to pass from making his way from last up to seventh. And this is all fed from Bryce Aaron, whose pace has dropped off precipitously. Jamie Chadwick driven right up to the back of that rookie's car. I wonder if he's gone through his Firestone tires or had a couple of big mistakes. And Jamie Chadwick now has the bit between her teeth chasing down her teammate. That's three Andretti Global cars, fifth, sixth, seventh. Bryce Aaron is having a good weekend. This is still only his second event in Indy Next as now Foster takes a look around Chadwick. Going to try to go to get the preferred line, and he has it now. The inside, back on the main straightaway, and Louis Foster finally gets it done. And now Miles Rowe is going to try to come along and go the long way around turn one side by side. Rowe makes the pass, so Chadwick loses a couple here with three laps to go. And that was Jamie Chadwick covered the inside into turn 16. Louis Foster used that momentum. The preferred normal racing line got around the outside in 16, turned into the seven, the inside of 17, and holds the spot. You see Jamie Chadwick defends the inside. Louis Foster says, I'll carry that momentum. Really close, respectful racing from those two. And because Jamie Chadwick was just outside the line, off the grip a little bit through 17. It meant that she lost a bunch of momentum. Miles Rowe able to go by. Bryce Aaron losing the spot to Louis Foster up into the fast chicane. Louis Foster has gone from last 21st into the top five. Bryce Aaron is going to unfortunately lose another spot. Miles Rowe moving forward. He's up to sixth. Aaron trying to hang on in seventh. He was running sixth at St. Pete fairly late when he hit the wall pretty hard. This is, again, only his second race back in America after spending time in Europe for the last several years. The 20-year-old from Illinois has been impressive as a rookie this season. Another move. Jamie Chadwick on the inside. Oh, and hits the curve and spins. She's going to be able to keep it out of the gravel. Slides into the gravel at the exit of turn one. She might be stuck. And we were set to go white this next time by. If it, she's that's great moving. to see. She's moving. I think she's going to be able to keep it going. Because if they go yellow, they won't be able to restart. Still green. Jacob Abel headed towards turn 13. He has finished second three times to Nolan Siegel at Road America last year, to Christian Rasmussen at Iowa last year, and in the only other race this season to Nolan Siegel at St. Petersburg. Jacob Abel has about two and a quarter laps to go, yellow, and he's going to get it done lap, because buddy. it's gone Great yellow job. as Great. the white flag comes out. Jacob Abel is a winner in Indy Next by Firestone. Jamie Chadwick was able to get started moving, but then got beached in that gravel trap. No last minute. Heroics. Let's look back. And by the way, we understand that Abel still needs to complete the lap under caution. It's going to be a little bit anticlimactic, but that was the moment that secured the race. And Chadwick trying to get one spot back, couldn't hang on to it. One more look. They did not touch. She just got on that apex curb. It upset the car. And because it's so downhill there, if you hit that curb with the left front, it wants to throw that right rear around. Slinging stones and not going anywhere for Jamie Chadwick beached in the gravel trap. What a shame. She's been quick in both rounds this weekend and is not this season and is not going to have a result to show for it. Started 10th, finished 20th at St. Petersburg, and she is going to finish 19th or 20th. She is going to finish 20th again because Lindsay Brewer is going to be able to get past her. 
if you're wondering. Great management of that race, but Jacob Abel good job with the push to pass, keeping the gap, season. that's beautiful. The longest anyone has gone before their first win. I just saw the chat with him last week, and our friend Ari Leyendijk Jr., who's gone on to many bigger and better things as a reality television star these days, and is still doing some racing in uh, wing sprints. He won in his 63rd start. But this is big. Jacob Abel has been knocking on the door for the last couple of years. Start number 30 is going to be the one. It is official. Jacob We're Abel has wall, won buddy. in Indy Next. And a great result. Yeah, buddy. You are the man. Yes. Great. Just pulling him. Let's go, let's go. Unbelievable. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. Amazing. Great management of that race. They said it on the team radio. I truly believe that was what won this race for Jacob Abel. Managing the push to pass, managing the gap. Nolan Siegel maybe had a little more pace, but it didn't break Jacob Abel. He was able to defend, manage that gap behind him. We saw that one. One opportunity for Nolan Siegel, the over-under in turn five. Jacob held the line into turn eight. That was all she wrote. I would also say smart drive for Nolan Siegel because championships are won by avoiding finishing in the back. And he will go into the next round tied in the championship. It able Siegel. Great run, too, for James Rowe and Kyle Collette, who showed pace. And how about Louis Foster salvaging something? Drive of the day for me, 21st to fifth. He got to Jamie Chadwick. Put some pressure on, wasn't able to go by, but then late in the race when Bryce Aaron was falling back, took advantage of that momentum shift, finishing fifth. Miles Rose had a good start to the season as rookie campaign. Eighth and sixth place finishes. Michael D. Orlando, fourth and seventh today. Hopefully we get to see him in Indianapolis as well. And Jamie's gonna be so disappointed with that. She was top five in all the practices, top five in qualifying, and not getting the result with that late race drama so fun day and it's only getting started we'll have a little bit of a break in exactly an hour we'll be on the air on nbc also here on peacock one o'clock eastern time 140 is the green flag the children's of alabama indy grand prix team penske on the front row scott mclaughlin will power it has been Putting it mildly, a tumultuous week for Team Penske. Joseph Newgarden is going to start eighth. If you haven't checked in since last weekend, the championship standings are much different than we thought they were going to be. Scott Dixon is now the championship leader. We have some fast cars for mid-pack. We have multiple strategies that are going to be in play today. So that should be good. We expect a lot of action today in IndyCar from Barber. Well, this is going to be a special moment. It always is for a first-time winner. And families are always significant. You don't get to the top level of motorsport. You don't get anywhere in motorsport without the support of your family. That's just the way it is. But this is a family-owned team. Bill Abel has said, you know what, I could partner with another team. Maybe I could have Jacob on another team. But we enjoy this. We enjoy the challenge, and they've made it happen. They've won at the top step of the ladder. And his... Uh opportunity to start on pole his first road and street circuit pole position absorb that pressure from nolan siegel all race long and come out with the biggest trophy from barber motorsports park great feeling for jacob for bill that whole able team john bruner as well does a great job with that operation let's go down to victory lane and dj clark the wait is over for Jacob Abel. He finally gets to put on that Firestone first place hat here. A big, big roar of approval and big hugs from the team. Jacob, oh, there he goes, more hugs. You can feel the emotion down here. And Jacob, that was about as picture perfect of management of a race as you could imagine. Great job, buddy. Yeah, um, unbelievable. I mean, I'm I'm speechless, man. I mean, this team has been working for this for so long now, and just to, to finally get it done and on such a you know picture perfect weekend. I mean, basically lights out all weekend long. You know, it was just up to me to deliver it. Uh, a lot of nerves all weekend long, but I uh, can finally say that yes, everything went right this weekend, and I was super happy with it. Well, everything went right. You had a scary moment coming down into turn five. Nolan trying to throw an over under on you. Talk me through your mentality at that time. 
Yeah, it took me a little bit to get up to speed, um, just kind of working through things. But once we were able to settle in and, you know, just manage the gap the whole entire race, it was good. But, yeah, props to Nolan. You know, he kept me honest the whole entire race. He was right there. Uh, he's a great competitor. I look forward to many battles like that throughout the season. Well, we're looking forward to him, too. Finally, a race winner, Jacob Abel. So this is how the championship looks now after two of 14 rounds complete and a double header coming up on the road course at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Friday, May 10th, Saturday the 11th. We are even. Those front two cars back to deuce, essentially starting at zero after race number two. Louis Foster, great recovery drive today. If he's in the championship conversation at the end of the year, it's going to come down to today when he comes over. But Nolan Siegel put the pressure on, wasn't able to get it done. DJ standing by in pit lane with Nolan. I am down here with Nolan Siegel, a hard fought P2. How was it out there for you? It was great. The car was great. First off, congrats to Jacob. He did a great job all weekend. Um, Honestly, I think we were faster today. The car was fantastic and saved everything for the last lap. We saved all of our P2P, saved the tires the entire race sitting there. Um, and right as I started to go for it, like, that yellow came out. So super disappointed. <laughs> um, but I think it's a good day when you're disappointed with second. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really is. And, and obviously for the championship, this sets you up incredibly well going forward. Yeah, no, it was great. And again, HMD has given me a fantastic car two weekends in a row. And I think that they'll continue to give me a great car every weekend from now on. So if we can keep it up here in the, the top two or three every weekend, that's the goal. And um, off to a great start. So yeah, um, you know, happy with where we are going into the rest of the season, but a little bit disappointed with today. <laughs> happy but disappointed. I think that's a good way to describe today. Nolan, thank you so much. Thank you. I hear it. I think we were in for some drama there in the final lap as well. But uh, nonetheless, that was entertaining. Happy for Jacob Abel and so many others that had really strong performances today. Great job for Jacob Abel, Nolan Siegel, but also Ruby Foster recovering the pit from the back of the field. So now we get set for IndyCar. We'll see Indy next back at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway two times on Indy Grand Prix weekend. Stay tuned, less than an hour away from IndyCar on NBC. For Charlie Kimball, DJ Clark, I'm Kevin Lee. Have a good day.